know what you're thinking. I decided to wow everybody by having mouse look enabled right from the beginning. Um, no, actually. Uh, I could. I wish I could show you my hands right now because I'm not actually touching any of the controls. This is face tracking with Elite Dangerous. And thankfully, this is a guide, so you're going to find out exactly how to do this for yourself. And uh, it's really quite something. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but it is definitely worthwhile. So, first things first, you are going to want to download a program called Facetrack No IR. That's one word. The link is down in the description below. And once you've got that downloaded, it's a free program, by the way. You don't need to spend anything to get it. It's a free open source program that you can use to get this kind of functionality in almost any game, actually. This will work with a lot of other games, including War Thunder and... Well, I can't think of any others, but I suppose most simulators will allow you to do this. Um, and it works quite well with Elite Dangerous, as you can see right here. Now, I have included the settings that I'm using down below as well, so once you've downloaded Facetrack, make sure to download my settings files as well, because I'm going to be using that for the rest of this guide. Okay, so now we're going to talk about how to set up uh, Facetrack No IR. Uh, first things first, you want to download the uh, settings files from down in the description below. This will ensure that you have the base settings that I'm working with here, and that you'll also have the supported game CSV, which will allow Facetrack to detect Elite Dangerous. Uh, it won't work otherwise, or at least it doesn't seem to work correctly otherwise, so make sure you download that first. And... Uh, I'll leave the path to install it to. Basically, if you go to your Facetrack installation directory, there is a folder called Settings. I'll leave an annotation on screen, and it'll be down in the description below so that you know where to go. And once you've put that in there, make sure you restart the program, and you should see the profiles here. So I've got Elite Dangerous setting A and setting B. If you see this, you've installed it correctly. All right, next thing that you should see, if make sure that you have your webcam plugged in and you start the program with the webcam plugged in. It can work if you do it otherwise, but it's better to just do it with the program uh, not running yet. Okay, so you can see here I'm actually using a Logitech uh, HD webcam C525. This is a 720p 30fps uh, webcam, if I remember correctly. And it's decent enough. The quality of the webcam does matter because it will affect whether it can recognize your face easily. Um, next thing, you'll want to make sure that your tracker source is set to face API, and if you go into settings, make sure that you have the, um, you don't have X, Y, and Z enabled. By not having it enabled, you will, it will prevent some unwanted effects happening in Elite Dangerous. Basically, your camera, these are the camera positionings, whereas these are the camera rotations. They're very different, because X, Y, and Z will allow the camera to kind of, move left, right, up and down without turning, which can make you a bit seasick. And to be honest, if you move around a lot, it's going to end up making it look like it's shaking. So you probably want to have that switched off. Just have the rotations on and it will only affect your point of view rather than the actual positioning of the camera. Uh, I've actually disabled roll because that seems to tilt the camera left and right and... Just imagine, okay, if you see my mouse cursor, roll will be in this way. So, if you start here, by tilting your head left and right, it will rotate in this sort of way. Imagining that the arrow is on top of your head. You probably don't want that. Um, the next thing is your pitch and your. Pitch will be sort of up and down rotation. Your is your left and right rotation. So, these are the ones that you actually want to have enabled. Uh, so I've actually had just these two enabled and roll disabled. So this will allow you to look around without having any tilting or anything like that. You can switch some of that on for immersive purposes, I suppose. But for me, I just find it more annoying than anything else. But that's up to your personal preference. Okay, so the next thing um, is your game protocol. You don't need to worry about filter. That's already set up. I think this is actually running on the default settings. 
I don't think I changed anything, but um, don't, yeah, don't switch that to anything else. Uh, game protocol, there are two modes you can use. You can use the VJoy Virtual Joystick, or you can use Free Track 2. I'm using Free Track 2 because this was the recommended one for this particular type of game, and uh, because VJoy actually conflicted with my uh, 360 pad, which I use for a lot of other games, so I had to uninstall that driver. So by using FreeTrack, I don't have that problem, so that's a good thing. I don't need to worry about that. And under settings for FreeTrack, you want to make sure that you have this setting enabled. This will start a dummy process that Elite Dangerous detects. So the actual game will detect this and allow it to detect the program, essentially, that's running your face tracking. So just have that enabled. I'm using this mode, which is the use track IR and hide free track. This was a setting that was recommended to me, so and it seems to work just fine, so I'm just using that. You don't need to worry about anything else. So that's basically how to set it up. And then from then on, just click start, and once the game is running, it should work. Hopefully. And that's all there really is to it. We've gone through the settings and how to make sure that your webcam is calibrated pro correctly. Just make sure that your positioning is correct because the, the one thing about this is you want your camera to be as close to the center of your screen as possible so that you're not looking at an awkward angle when you want to fly around. Uh, sometimes if you have your monitor offset to a little bit, for example I have my my monitor offset to the right a little bit it's a little bit more difficult to adjust but positioning of the webcam is particularly important uh, next thing that you want to make sure is that your webcam actually it's better if it's below you rather than above you uh, I'm not sure exactly why that is I'm suppose I suppose some you know if you're more knowledgeable on the subject you can probably let me know down in the comments but Basically, uh, I used to have the camera, as most people do, mounted on top of my monitor and that actually leads to a lot of inaccuracy and it seems to be very... it loses its calibration very quickly. But by putting it on top of my keyboard, which is below the monitor, it seems to be much more stable and can provide a more accurate tracking. I have modified the curves as well in the settings. I think I probably showed you that. If not, uh, sorry, I might have forgotten, but uh, I'm sure you can see it for yourself. And that has actually got a very slow curve on it, so you can see the movements are actually a little bit slow. You can actually increase the speed of these if you like, um, but that's all there really is to it. Uh, just a word of warning to anybody who streams, or if you're a YouTuber and you're watching this and you use face cam, you are going to need more than one camera to make this work for your streams or videos, mainly because your camera can only be used by one program at a time, uh, in most cases, so you are going to need a second camera to enable uh, face tracking to work uh, because you can't have the face cam enabled together. Unless, of course, you want to, you know, use the face tracking picture, which is black and white and has a little yellow U on top of it. It doesn't look that nice. So, yes, you are going to need two cameras if you want to use this and face cam together. But uh, it seems to work very well and it is a very good advantage if you're somebody who does dogfighting because you can track targets really easily and you can do this while still being in control of your ship because if you've played this game at all you'll notice that mouse look uh, disables your flight controls. Not useful if you're in a fight. So that's the advantages of this sort of thing. Now this is a free program and it's not, it's based on the same idea that Track IR uses but it doesn't have that degree of functionality in the sense that track IR uses a physical object and sensor to actually track whereas this is literally trying to recognize your face so the quality of your camera is going to make a difference and the position of the camera as I've said is going to make a difference as well um, so this may or may not work for you this is not a foolproof solution but it is the cheapest possible solution that you can use for this sort of system. Obviously it doesn't have the cost that Oculus or Track IR does, but it seems to perform the function to a reasonable degree. I wouldn't say it's a replacement for either of those two, and it's definitely not a competitor for them, but it does work. So give this a shot if you want to have a sort of um, head movement in Elite Dangerous. 
And if watching this video has made you sick, I apologize because I am moving my head around quite a lot. Uh, I probably won't use this when recording videos simply because it doesn't make any sense to do so, but I probably will be using this for actual play. Uh, for actual streaming, I probably will have this running as well, so if you want to check out the stream, the link is down in the description below. And uh, leave a comment if you have any questions about this guide or anything else about Elite Dangerous in, in general, really. And uh, don't forget to leave a like if you found this helpful. And as always, my name is Panzer. Thank you very much for watching, good hunting, and I'll see you next time.